science in a nutshell. Serious science. Radioactivity. Ionising radiation, I mean really, who cares, why am I bothering you with this? Well it's actually quite important, we live on a radioactive planet, it's quite natural, there's radiation, radioactivity all around us, even you are slightly radioactive, but more about that later. Why is it dangerous? Well, radiation, ionising radiation, is very bad for living things. It will destroy your cells and it can cause lots of nasty side effects and eventually lead to things like cancer or even death just by being exposed to too much of it. Here's some of the side effects it can cause. Um, if you're exposed to ionising radiation, you can become very ill, you'll feel nauseous, you'll vomit, your hair will fall out, your teeth will fall out, you'll end up with dizziness, fatigue. It can even lead to cancer if you're exposed to it over a long period of time. It can cause mutations if you are pregnant in your unborn babies. And if you're exposed to a very high dose of it, it could actually lead to more or less instant horrible death. Oh? I have lots of radioactive sources hidden away in my secret underground lab. They all emit ionising radiation and you can detect ionising radiation using a Geiger Muller tube or Geiger counter for short. Listen to that, that box is supposed to shield from the, uh, the radioactivity but it's not. Oh dear. There's four types of radiation that we need to look at. There is alpha, beta minus, positron emission, sometimes called beta plus, and gamma radiation. Um, if you're doing AQA, AQA exam, sorry about the AQA, then you don't need to know about positron emission. Um, but if you're doing Edexcel, you do. And if you're just interested in science, you do. First up, alpha particles. Ionizing radiation is very dangerous, so I'm using the tweezers to hold the little metal cup which contains a tiny little radioactive alpha source inside. The beeps you are hearing are caused when an alpha particle enters the Gagamuller tube and ionises the gas inside. Alpha particles have a very short range in air, that's because they're very strongly ionising. Alpha particles are absorbed by a piece of paper and won't even pass through human skin from the outside. Alpha particles are the most ionising but the least penetrating type of ionising radiation. So what is an alpha particle? What's going on? Alpha radiation is actually a particle made up of two protons and two neutrons being ejected from an unstable nucleus. It can actually be described as a helium nucleus. Because it's got two protons and two neutrons, it has a positive charge of plus two. Alpha radiation is very strongly ionising. That means it strips electrons of atoms as it collides into them. Hundreds of thousands of collisions. Uh, but because it's so big, it's large mass, and it's got a positive charge of plus two, it doesn't actually travel very far through your ways. It's got quite a small range and can actually be stopped by something as simple as paper. And it won't, even if it's outside you, pass through your own skin. However, you do need to be cautious. You might remember the famous case, you won't remember because you're probably too young, uh, but back in the 2000s there was a chap called Alexander Litvinenko who was actually poisoned by some Russian gentleman who met him for a cup of tea um, in London and whilst there slipped some polonium into his cup of tea, a powdery metal, which emits alpha radiation. So alpha radiation is very dangerous. If you get something inside you which emits alpha radiation, then it can kill you pretty quickly, especially in large amounts. So during an alpha decay, a uh, helium nucleus is emitted from the nucleus in order to make it more stable. So let's take uranium-236, which is an isotope of uranium, as an example. This is an alpha emitter. So when it emits an alpha particle, what actually happens? Well, we end up with an entirely new element. Yes, this is weird. We end up with a completely different element left behind. Why? Well, if you think about it, that uranium nucleus has lost two protons and two neutrons. Its number of protons have changed, so therefore it is now a completely different element. It is in fact turned into thorium. Okay, this is how we represent the alpha particle. As a H here, you say? What, what is that? Well, it's a helium nucleus, remember? So they will use that, especially in your exams, they will use that symbol to represent an alpha particle because it is like a helium nucleus. Um, they could also use the alpha symbol, which I'll show you in a second. So what's happened? Well, 
you think that uranium-236, it's lost two protons and two neutrons, so therefore its atomic mass number has decreased by four, because it's lost four particles from the nucleus. Um, its atomic number has decreased by two, because it has lost two protons, and that's what makes it change into a different element. So that is the pattern with alpha decay. Top number decreases by four, bottom number decreases by two. That's all you need to remember, to be honest. Um, there's the alpha particle symbol, HE. Uh, we could also see, use that, the Greek letter alpha, which it was named after, makes a bit more sense, but the exam boards seem to prefer using HE for helium. Next. Beta. Beta particles have a much larger range than alpha particles and will pass straight through paper. In fact, they're only absorbed by thin aluminium. This is because they're weakly ionising. Beta particles actually turn out to be electrons. Electrons from the nucleus, what's going on? A beta particle is actually an electron. That's what it is. It is an electron. So it has a negative charge, a minus one, just like a normal electron. Um, it will actually travel a few metres through air because it is weakly ionising. It will pass through paper. It will pass through your skin, into your body, causing damage to your cells. And it does so. That's why it's dangerous. Um, but it can be stopped by a thin sheet of aluminium. But it will pass through your skin, pass through paper. So we need to be careful if something is a beta emitter, if it is there outside your body. So as I was saying, what's going on? An electron from the nucleus, you cry. Wake up. No one's listening. Listen, pay attention. An electron from the nucleus. Well, I'm going to tell you. There it is. There's the symbols. Right, here we go. What's happening then? Well, what actually is going on is a neutron in the nucleus turns into a proton. And due to some kind of weak interaction force, quantum physics things going on that nobody really quite understands, then as that happens, an electron is created and emitted from the nucleus from the excess energy. Okay? So that's what's going on. So a neutron turns into a proton in the nucleus, and as it does that, an electron is ejected from the nucleus as it comes into existence. Weird. Beta minus emission can also be represented by a simple decay equation. Let's take my old friend carbon-14, which is an isotope of carbon. As an example, it's radioactive. It gives out beta minus particles. When it does that, we end up with nitrogen. It's changed into a completely different element again. So what's going on inside the nucleus? Here's our beta particle that's been emitted. Remember, in the nucleus, a neutron turned into a proton. That means the atomic mass number stays the same because we've got the same number of particles in that nucleus. However, we've now got an extra proton, which means the atomic number increases by one. Different amount of protons, different elements. Literally, carbon has changed from carbon into nitrogen. We use the symbol for an electron as the symbol for a beta particle. That's what the examples like to do. There it is. Notice that minus one. That's what tells us it's an electron rather than a positron. You could be old-fashioned and use the symbol beta for a beta particle, which would actually make sense, wouldn't it? It wouldn't make sense, but why would we want people to understand physics when we can confuse them so easily? Sadly, I don't have any positron emitters in my secret lab, so we'll just go straight on to the key facts. What's happening this time? Positron decay, sometimes known as beta plus decay, is even weirder than beta minus decay. This time in the nucleus, a proton has decided he's had enough of being a proton. I say he, that's, that's a bit sexist. It's a proton, it doesn't have a gender. Anyway, as I was saying, a proton decides he's had enough of being a proton and turns into a neutron. As it does that, it ejects a positron from the nucleus. What on earth is a positron? I hear you cry. Well, a positron is a positively charged electron. You've never heard of such a thing. Of course you haven't. It's actually a type of something called antimatter. Antimatter is the opposite to normal matter. And when normal matter meets antimatter, they completely annihilate each other. And I mean literally annihilate each other. Literally, actually literally. meaning literally, literally meaning literally this time. They completely cease to exist and release huge amounts of gamma ray energy as they do so. Let's have a look at that in the form of an equation. So remember, a proton turns into a neutron. As it does that, it releases a positron which is a positive electron, so we use the electron symbol, but notice that bottom number is not negative one, it's positive one. That's how you know it's a positron, it's a type of antimatter. It will have zero range, because as I say, it completely annihilates as soon as it meets normal matter. 
The manifest from the decay can also be represented using simple equations. Let's look at an example. Here's magnesium. This does in fact emit positrons. What happens to the magnesium when it does so? Well, once again, we end up with a completely different element. Look, it's changed from magnesium into Na, which is sodium. Gosh, that was chemistry I did then. Yes, it's changed into sodium, but why? Well, it's emitted a positron. But what's actually happened in the nucleus is a proton turned into a neutron. That means that the atomic mass number will again stay the same because all that's happened is a proton's become a neutron, same amount of particles in the middle, and the atomic number will decrease by one because it's effectively lost a proton by it turning into a, a proton rather by it turning into a neutron. All you need to remember, plain English, top number stays the same. This time the bottom number decreases by one. The symbol we use for a positron, as I said earlier, is the same as an electron. But look, it has that plus one down the bottom. We could, of course, be old-fashioned and use beta. Um, yes, but we, we don't. But no idea why. And finally, gamma radiation. Gamma, gamma radiation is very weakly ionizing. However, this means it has a very large range and it will pass through most things. In fact, it's only stopped by thick lead or several meters of concrete. <gasps> so what is gamma radiation? Gamma rays are actually waves emitted from the nucleus. They're electromagnetic waves, the very same gamma rays that we've met before when we've talked about the electromagnetic spectrum. This radioactive rock I have here is emitting gamma rays. Gamma rays have a tiny wavelength. We're talking like 10 to the power of minus 12. That's a millionth of a millionth of a metre. Good eye. I mean, gamma rays. Yeah? I might turn into the Incredible Hulk. You might die. What? I might what? Might die. What do you mean die? Get diarrhea. Get diarrhea. My hair fall out. Yep. Even more. I'm so nice. Why didn't I enter the Hulk? No, he's not real. He's not real? Not really. Oh. You learn something every day, don't you? Right, gamma radiation is a bit different because it's not actually a particle that's been emitted from the nucleus. It's actually a type of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so we've met gamma rays before. They're part of the electromagnetic spectrum. They've got a very tiny wavelength, remember, around 10 to the minus 12. A very high energy because they've got a high frequency. So because they're part of the electromagnetic spectrum, they travel at the speed of light. They've got zero charge, zero mass. They're very weakly ionizing. They'll literally pass straight through you. In order to stop a gamma ray, uh, well, they'll pass through just about everything apart from thick lead or several meters of concrete. They're the most penetrating form of ionizing radiation, the most weakly ionizing, but they can do damage to you still. Uh, do not be afraid, okay? Well, no, actually, that's wrong. Do be afraid, okay? Sometimes I'm not sure what I'm saying. Okay, so gamma radiation. So there's no change to the actual atomic structure. The nucleus is, again, becoming more stable, but there's no actual change to the, the structure of that nucleus. Let's have a look. So for gamma radiation, it's dead easy to remember because nothing really happens. So if I start off with some uranium-235, another isotope of uranium, then it stays as uranium-235 because nothing's changed about that, the structure of the nucleus. And a gamma ray is emitted. There's the symbol for gamma. Funnily enough, we're using gamma, the Greek letter gamma, which it's named after. Lovely. Now, so strictly, you don't need to know that for your, for your GCSEs, but it's wise to remember that nothing actually happens to the actual structure of the nucleus. The element, in this case, remains the same. There we go. Summarised beautifully eventually when I press the buttons. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. I've got the message. So here's some equations for you to try yourself. Um, they're typical nuclear decay equations. Uh, this is the type of thing you will get in your exams. So all the elements are there. Um, you've just got to fill in the numbers where the question marks are. What type of decay is it? And what happens to the atomic mass and the atomic number? I'm going to be quiet now. Okay, so press pause um, if you want to answer the questions. I'm going in a minute, to be honest. I've got to do my daily permitted exercise because I'm on lockdown. In fact, we're all on lockdown. The whole world is kind of on lockdown a bit. Anyway, coronavirus, all that. Anyway, press pause. Okay, press pause. Let's go for the answers. So let's have a look. The top one, what's my clues? Well, there's uh, an electron there, but it's got a minus one on the bottom, so that must 
to be beta minus decay. So that means the top number stays the same. Uh, beta minus means a neutron turns into a proton, so the bottom number will increase by one. Uh, next, what's my clue? That's a HE there. That, that's a helium nucleus. So that's my clue. It's a alpha particle. So therefore, the top number will go down by four, and the bottom number will go down by two because it's lost two protons. And uh, that's the new element I've got, TL. God knows what that is. And down the bottom, right, well, we've got, ooh, we've got a beta sign, but there's a one on the bottom. That's a plus on the bottom. So therefore, that's going to be a positron decay. So that means that a proton this time is turned into a neutron. So the top number will stay the same because nothing, the amount of particles in the nucleus is the same. And the bottom number will actually decrease by one because that proton has decided to spend the rest of its life as a neutron. I thank you. I'm off now. Um, I suggest you do the same, to be honest. It's been tough, this, isn't it? A bit of a strain. Goodbye. A big finish! Science in a nutshell!